Hello, I'm Goran, and the plan for this video is to explain the maths behind the first-past-the-post electoral system used in the UK. In the United Kingdom, a general election is where everyone votes for a candidate to be the next Prime Minister. I except that's not exactly what happens. Uh, what we're actually doing is we are voting for a person to represent our constituency in Parliament, and then the Prime Minister is determined on um, how many MPs of each political party sit in Parliament. So, in the UK, um, the country is divided into 650 constituencies um, whose registered electoral um, quota has to be between 95 and 105% of the uh, average which is just a fancy way of saying about 70,000. Okay, and then each constituency votes for an MP, and whichever party has the most MPs, so more than 326 MPs in Parliament, gets to be the next Prime Minister. Hi there, Goran in the edit here. Just thought I'd note that if things were left here, uh, then the electoral system in the UK would actually make some sense. What you have is 650 members of Parliament representing their constituency independently, and then the monarch appoints one of these MPs to be Prime Minister. And crucially, it is their decision. It is whichever MP they think is best suited for the job. However, when large political parties form, things get a bit more complicated, which I do explain a bit later in the video. There are some situations where you know you can have a, you can have a government with less than three to six MPs, uh, but I'm not going to go into that. Okay. At first, this sounds pretty good. Um, you know, you're reducing seventy thousand uh, people to one representative. Uh, you know, on, on paper, that sounds good. Except that's not what happens. It can actually reduce as little as a third of the constituency to um, an elected representative. And you might say, oh, well, that's a bit extreme, you know? That doesn't really happen. But it does. In the 2019 general election, the Conservatives won a 365-seat majority um, and several of those seats were won in marginal um, constituencies. For example, in Innes Mon, um, the Conservative candidate Virginia Crosby won with 12,959 votes, which is a vote share of 35.5%. That means that, that two-thirds of their constituency aren't properly represented, re represented in Parliament. Because, you know, if you think about it, let's say that one person in that constituency voted Labour, that means they probably identify with the Labour manifesto more than the, than the Conservative one. But Virginia Crosby is very unlikely to um, back Labour motions. You know, she is a Conservative member. So, it's a bit unfair that this, this can happen in our electoral system. And that's not the only issue. Let's suppose that you have a hypothetical country that votes um, in a 60-40 split between the circles and the triangles. Now, this country has five constituencies. Yeah, it's pretty small. Okay, so there are five seats in Parliament. Okay. Now... Let's also suppose that um, this country has its constituencies made, um, designed in such a way that um, each of them vote in 60-40. Okay, so nationally it's still a 60-40 split. But with first past the post, every seat in Parliament will be won by the circle party. That means that 40% of the population, the entire national population of this country, are just not represented at all. Which is, it, that, it's incredibly unfair. And again, you might think, oh well, that's a bit extreme, okay, that doesn't really happen. And again, 
It does. If we look again at the 2019 general election, the Conservatives won that 365-seat majority, okay, and that gives them 56.2% of the House, okay? They control 56.2%. And yet, if you look at the vote share, the actual national vote share, they only got 43.6%, which means first-past-the-post has skewed the vote towards the Conservatives. It's unbelievable. Okay, we're in 2022. This should not be the way that politics works. And yet in the UK it does. And I want to be clear, it's not, this video is not an attack on the Conservatives. Okay, it's just that they're the most recent electoral data that I could get. Uh, Goran in the edit again, uh, just to prove this isn't an attack on the Conservatives, I looked up some other elections from UK history, and in 2005, Labour won with 355 seats, forming a majority government, but their vote share was only 35.2%. That's the largest misrepresentation of the public vote ever to form a majority government, thanks to First Past the Post. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do hit like. Um, I plan to make some more videos about maths on politics and dissect other electoral systems. So if you want to see that, uh, do subscribe. Um, if you want to see a video that's more about tactical voting in first past the post um, systems, then I've linked to a video by Jay Foreman in the description below. It should also be in the card, which I think appears either here or here, I'm not sure which, um, but in the meantime, I've been Goran, and this has been Maths on Politics. Um, based on the number of votes, um, the number of MPs in Parliament a Prime Minister is determined, and a bit of blossom. Nice. So that's, uh, I mean, it wasn't great, but I mean, that was a wonderful blooper. Wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll get there, we'll get there.